Fun with Failure. Welcome to the next installment of the Neckbeard Experience. I found two epic stories today that I think you will enjoy. First we've got College Beard, the Lord of the Ham. Then we have Dress Beard, the Fancy Dressing Encyclopedia of Useless Knowledge. So sit back and here we go. Before we get started, I want to introduce the cast. First, there's me. I'm Mel, 20 years old, 6 foot 3 and 190 pounds. I'm ripped and muscular if I say so myself. Then we have Lady K. She's the object of the beard's affection. She's the wonderful my lady, the damsel in distress, the suffering maiden. Yeah, all of that. She's 19, sporty and athletic, but she's recovering from a neck and back injury, hence the distress. I've been friends with her since I was 10 years old. Then we have Mr. A. He's my best friend. He's doing the same university course as me. He's the same age, and I've known him since I was 11. He's huge. He's like 215 pounds of muscle. I'm going to be using a lot of hyperboles for this guy, as with you do with all good bros. Then we have Andrew, which is college beard, or Mr. Dorito. He's 20 years old, extremely arrogant, seriously obese, and all around the white knight. He thinks he's going pro in Counter-Strike, League of Legends, and any other game that he has played recently. Spoiler alert, he's not. Again, hyperboles and exaggerations will be used to death on this guy. Our story begins at university. Mr. A and I took a gap year. We traveled to Vietnam and Australia to see the sights. Not once did I get emasculated by a dropping bear or bitten by rattlers. Lady K skipped her gap year because she wanted to catch up with us so that she could take the classes together with us because we both literally don't know anybody at university, save one or two people. It is orientation day and we're all looking around campus to figure out where our lecture locations are and who's on our courses. We all introduce ourselves and now enters our hero. Andrew, who comes up to me with a classy one-liner about a demeaning role for women. And this is what he says. Some chick needs to get me a sandwich, am I right? Ha 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 ha. In my endless masculinity, I respond, Oh yeah, whatever, dude. While I'm not a feminist, I am definitely not a middle-aged minded dope who wants women to get in their place or anything like that. So you can understand that Andrew and I did not get off on a great start. And I saw Mr. A and Lady K looking around. Unfortunately, Andrew sees where I'm looking. He starts toward them and I follow. I'm dragging my feet because I am dreading the coming cringe. To his credit, Andrew didn't immediately make Mr. A and Lady K hate him. He merely said, Hi, I'm Andrew. Can I have your number? I don't have many friends here. And you look like you need a good one. Lady K looked bemused, and she mumbled something about her phone being low on battery. Andrew was not dismayed though, and he replied with a speedy, Oh, that's okay. You can have my number some other time. You won't be able to evade me forever. Absolute cringe. At this point, I made some comment along the lines of, Well, we've got a real player over here. Hide your wives. Or maybe I said that one later to my friends. I'm kind of fuzzy on the details. Meanwhile, students had found their study groups and we were getting to know each other. So we dutifully went and said hello to all the people in our classes. And Andrew followed me around, saying, Wow, that chick is smoking my carriage. You need to help me get to know her better. Now I'm crushing on Lady K pretty bad at this point. So his comments merely angered me. I turned around and very politely, I asked him to please stop following me. Amazingly, he didn't. Yeah, I know. I may have come across a little bit too harsh on Dewey, but this story is just getting started. At this point, I saw a fairly arrogant and extremely fat man trying to make moves on my crush. But oh boy, does it get worse. So, at a little party we had to kick off the year, this was to help us to get to know everyone, and everyone was invited. I went, like the normie half-wit that I am, and so did Lady K, but Mr. A couldn't go. Beers aplenty and food in the huge bowls, all popcorn and chips, and such like. As Lady K swims competitively and is getting back into her game after a neck injury, she avoids the snack foods. I really should have done it too, as I need to be fit for my sports, mainly basketball and badminton, but I'm a total pushover for free food. And snacks are my weakness. Cue our friendly neighborhood fedora man. Boom! 
he comes in. Fedora on his greasy, lanky hair, and he makes a beeline for the face that he recognizes. Unfortunately, that face is mine. Lady K is standing next to me, who is awkwardly, but attractively, leaning on the wall. She's trying to avoid conversation. With all the dignity that I can muster, I stuff my face with chips and popcorn. Lady K doesn't have the option. Andrew is also pigging out. He's got to maintain that huge fleshy mountain of his. Also, unfortunately, he doesn't care to machine gun us with the half-chewed bits of popcorn while he talks to us. Hi, Lady K. Hey, Festus. Nice party, don't you think? No, I really don't think. It's a bust. And nobody's mingling. Just sitting around and performing clicks and gossiping about who banged who. Undeterred, our hero continues. Are you not eating, Lady K? Without waiting for a reply, he blunders on. It's horrible how some women are forced not to eat. Most women would be a lot more attractive if they had some more weight. But I guess it saves money. <laughs> there, he did it. Lady K suffered for about four years of severe anorexia. And she fought herself out of it by swimming and getting competitive. My sister nearly died from anorexia. And she's had mental and eating disorders ever since. I see red. At the moment, the only thing that's holding me back from hitting this enormous meat bag is my inherent introversion and beta tendencies. Lady K sucks in some air through her teeth at his comment, but otherwise remains silent. I'm pretty sure that my face was red, because our master of social interactions comments on that next. Wow, Festus. Are you okay? You're gone all red. Is there anything you need to tell me? <laughs> I keep silent and just chug my beer because I'm a Brit, and dang it, if we do anything well, it's passively aggressively keeping quiet. I had hopes that Dubaka would go away, especially when he sensed the mood, but he doesn't seem to get the hint very well. The party drags on till 1am, at which things start to actually get started, and it started to get interesting. But then the alcohol ran out. And everyone left as if the room had a strong smell of stale Cheetos or flat dew. Oh, wait. I live on campus for the first year of university, and so did Lady K and Mr. A. As mentioned, Mr. A was indisposed, and he was up in London, so his bed was free, as we bunked in the same room. Lady K and I went back to my room, and we seethed together about what Dupiter had said. We drank through my reserve alcohol, and we got pretty sloshed. And Lady K went back to her room around 4 a.m., so that her roomie wouldn't expect that anything was wrong. So I was furious at Andrew, and I barely got any sleep. This put me in an even worse mood than I had been before. Hopefully this gives you guys some context as to why I despise Andrew. Uh, don't worry, there's more to come. From stalking to fat logic, to threats of violence and general neck beardery. Here's my side of the story of the first of many cringe tales. Here's the character, me. I'm Jewish and Native American, and I make a lot of jokes that white people can't get away with. And I'm also the brains. Then there's Austin. He's the Mexican. He's generally very smart, but on occasion he's extremely derpy, and he is definitely the babe getter. Then we got Slav. He's my Slavic friend. He puts up with me in Austin. He never skips leg day. Thus, he's the muscle. Then we got Donger. This is our other white friend. I think he was raised by computers, considering how good he is. He's definitely the nerd of the group. Then we got Dressbeard, the cringe lord in chief. He says he's a master of 7 to 13 languages, masters Asian fighting styles, and a suit lover. Our tale begins in one grand Friday evening. It's in the spring, and we all decide to head out to grab some dinner. Eventually, we all settle on a Vietnamese drive bar, since the food is pretty great. As the sole driver of a car, I gather the group up and we head out in my good old 2001 Toyota Camry. If you can find one for a good deal, it comes highly recommended. Eventually everyone is picked up, and the usual teenage banter begins. Eventually the talk of motorcycles begin. Austin owns one, and he likes to comment on ones that we pass. Dressbeard takes a note and states, I've read up on motorcycles a lot and I'm gonna get one. I wouldn't even need the gear you wear, Austin, because I use proper ejection techniques. We all cease the conversation at that statement. We're unsure how to even address this. To give you an idea of what Dressbeard is like, here's a very rapid summary. He has no job of any sort. 
He plays League of Legends. He got expelled from school previously because of a knife-related incident. That will be in a prequel series. He plays a sniper in any game we play, like Team Fortress 2, Payday, League, or Counter-Strike. He wears a two-piece suit every time we go out, whether it's 150 degrees outside or a total downpour. He claims to know 7 to 13 different languages, ranging from English, Spanish, to Latin and Gaelic. It varies when you ask him. He says he's the master of Asian combat styles, ranging from hand-to-hand -hand combat to katanas and archery. Of course, we haven't seen any proof of this, but we don't argue with him. Plus, he hangs around with us all the time. Finally, we get into the argument that if you're going 60 miles an hour on a motorcycle and get hit, you can't use proper ejection techniques to guarantee your survival as that is just not physically possible. Dressbeard, flustered and shocked that anyone would contradict him, says, You guys don't understand because you all haven't been trained as much as me. Besides, Austin can't argue because I'm going to buy a different type of bike. Losing the urge to fight, especially inside of a tiny car that's almost as old as I am, we all sit in silence and arrive at the restaurant. As we walk inside, Dressbeard begins to attempt to translate the menu for us. He's ignoring the fact that the translations are on the opposite side of the page. This trend continues until we notice on the TV, there's some horrifying Japanese game show. Using his extremely first year Japanese and countless years of anime, Dressbeard manages to gather something show something something Tokyo. However, before his lack of Japanese can be questioned, he adds, they must use haranga or kanji. Only no katakanga. The evening progresses through dinner as we all focus on our food, and the conversation begins to lessen. After an uneventful half hour, we pay for the bill and we head out to the car. As we talk about our classes, Dressbeard begins his well-prepared speech. Schools provide horrible education. I'm glad I left. Got expelled for carrying a knife. I've taught myself, and I know more than I ever could at crap school. Well, Donger is homeschooled. This is because of frequent illnesses. Austin, Slav, and I, we tend to have an amount of school spirit, and we respond. Well, public school isn't for everyone. Some people do better homeschooled. Dressbeard noticed the change in atmosphere, and instead of backing off, he remarks, No, high school is horrible. You all could do a lot better if you teach yourselves. As annoyed as we all are, we obviously cannot start a fight, as the Toyota Camry hardly fits five tiny people, let alone the one massive Slavic dude and four average-sized teenagers. As we're all sitting in silence, Dressbeard continues his rant on education. We drop off people one by one, soon leaving me and him left in the car. As we drive, he comments, Hey, you should really get an axle cord for your USB, and maybe get better speakers. Your setup is pretty bad. As a high school senior preparing to go out of state and to attend college, a 2001 Camry is a pretty lucky gift. Dressbeard, of course, he's never looked into getting his learner's permit. He's always expected me to give him a ride on demand. I hold my tongue and reply, Yeah, too bad they didn't have those in 2001, man. And I drop him off. Even though we can't believe it, it could even get worse. Just like the Star Wars prequels, it gets even worse when Kara, my friend, joins the dinner group. My friend Kara, she's Dressbeard's new target. She watches anime and Star Wars, plays video games, and to date, she has more hours than me in the Dragon Age trilogy, somewhat like over 200 hours. After the previous week, we decided to give up and throw in Kara just to witness how cringy Dressbeard becomes near a new girl. I've known Kara for around 10 years, and at this point, we tend to mess with each other. So when I invite her, all I say is, just a heads up, you will encounter some pretty bad cringe. Kara later told me that all she suspected was bad K-pop or SpongeBob trap music. Oh, that poor soul. Anyways, since now we have six people, Austin takes his motorcycle, and he said that he will meet us there. Kara lives right next to me, so I pick her up. Then I pick up Slav, then Donger, leaving Dressbeard as the last pickup of the evening. As we park outside his house, he opens the door and walks out in his two-piece suit, dress slacks and shoes, and a solid black trench coat. Kara is texting, and she doesn't experience her first encounter of Dressbeard until he opens the door. Shocked that a cute female is in one of the seats, he proclaims, If you were to mention this, I might have bothered to dress up. None of us could have expected this turn of events. 
And while Kara may be in total shock, the rest of us are still speechless. I regain my ability to think and I begin to drive off, and we go back to the Vietnamese place. If you haven't had this before, give it a try. It's really good. Everyone except for Dressbeard engages in conversation. Kara and I are talking about Dragon Age Inquisition and our current characters. When Dressbeard suddenly realizes his chance to impress the new lady, using his Dragon Age wiki knowledge, he burst out, Hey, did you know that Orlais literally just speaks French? I'm not fluent myself, but I'm pretty good. It's one of the few languages I know, but I can always help you translate it if you want. I don't know how many of you have played Dragon Age games, but if you do get into the series, it's great. But that fact is noticed literally the moment you talk to a character. Unfortunately for Dressbeard, both Kara and I, we've been taking French for years in high school. And so she comments, Oh yeah, I figured that out. It's pretty cool. Sam and I just play it together sometimes, so we usually can translate it. But thanks for your offering. Looking through my rearview mirror, I see Dressbeard giving me the stare of death as I dared not to make him out like a god in front of the new female. Dressbeard has the proud multi-year long distance relationships with a legitimate girl. For a while, we just assume he was trying to make himself look cool. He still has the urge to flirt and go nice guy mode on every girl he meets. They fight 24-7. Dressbeard is never the reason, and he never does anything wrong. Now that that's out of the way, let us return to Kara and Dressbeard. He begins to try to regale her with his knowledge of Asian fighting styles and Japanese after she mentions anime in a passing conversation. And this gives us just enough time to arrive and sit at our table. Once here, Dressbeard continues his translation efforts. He manages to inform us that the Japanese game show on TV is talking about anime and that Kara, you should really watch it because it's much deeper than any other mainstream crap. He's shocked that Kara isn't worshipping him like a god, and that she seems to be talking to Austin more than him. Dressbeard attempts to make Austin look bad by saying, I would never drive a crappy bike like Austin drives. I insist on buying a really nice one because I've been looking online, and I've taught myself how to eject properly. Kara laughs, thinking he's kidding, and Austin avoids starting an argument for all of our sakes, thus leaving Dressbeard no ammunition. Dinner goes as well as you can expect, especially with Dressbeard trying every potential idea to grab Kara's attention, resorting to friending her on Facebook at the table, leaving her with no option but to accept it. After a few failed anime references, and underestimating her knowledge of both Star Wars and Dragon Age, Dressbeard resorts to sulking and complaining about, good guys always have to deal with the worst stuff. Once dinner ends, we all hop in the car and wave goodbye to Austin, and he heads off on his motorcycle. Once we start driving, Dressbeard's first comment is, Kara, do you like Austin? He's so dumb and annoying. You should find a guy who can treat you like you deserve. I wish I could make this stuff up, but I can't. At this point, Kara is also done with him, but she's too tired to fight. So she just says, I just met him, so I don't have a crush on him. He seems pretty chill though. Dressbeard relishes in his victory over Austin, and he begins to list off anime and TV shows that she needs to watch. And he says, you should watch these. It will better develop your brain, and you should educate yourself. I did my research on Google Maps so that I could take the new route, so that I could make Dressbeard the first drop off. As he leaves, trench coat fluttering in the wind, he tells Kara, It's totally cool to meet a girl who isn't a total preppy witch. We should hang out sometime. After he shuts the door, Kara looks at the four of us and says, Jesus Christ! I didn't know that one person can contain so much cringe. He's already messaged me on Facebook. We laugh our butts off and the next few weeks that follow were very similar in pattern. That's until Dressbeard invites Kara to a renaissance festival to be his lady. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you enjoyed those stories. If you did, hit that like button. Thank you to the wonderful authors at Reddit. The next series I'm going to do is the TIFU series. I hope you enjoy. What do you think about my new drawings? I took a little bit of time to do those. I might do the real detailed drawings every once in a while. And I might do the easier drawings from time to time too. If you want to hear more funny stories like this in the future, please hit that subscribe button. Have you had any experiences with some neckbeards? Please go ahead and send it to my email at funwithfailure at gmail.com. 
For updates and more crazy stuff, follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Till next time, have a great day and I hope to see you again.